yo YouTube, this is my video for Monday the 17th of June. Um, it is actually for full disclosure the following morning because I was really quite tired after work yesterday and I just couldn't um, bring myself to get myself from head around trying to drive and do a video and work out my stats. So here we go. So here are my stats for Monday. I have got a new average fuel price for this week, and that is 13.41 pence per mile. That is going to increase this week due to something that happened on Monday. I'll talk about it later. My mileage for the day was 357, 357. And my hours worked was 10 and 3 quarters. I earned a gross total from two CX jobs only, £195. And I spent £47 and 87 pence on fuel. Which means that I had a, <clears throat> a day of work and I netted after fuel £147, £147. <coughs> so I would summarise the day as being not a disaster, but not great. But I think I did learn something, <coughs> or at least it reinforced something about the area that I went to. So let me explain in chronological order how my day went. So I hadn't got anything booked in from Friday or over the weekend for the morning. So I got up, oh no, oh sorry, wait a minute. I woke up at six o'clock and I was looking at jobs in bed <coughs> on the CX and nothing came up at all. The first job that arrived in my area at all was about half past six, for about half past seven pick up. Uh, that was something like a Peter to London job, which I wasn't gonna do, it was my first job of the day. So it seemed like a very quiet start to the day. In the end, I got my first job that I've been on, which was a job from Boston going to Newbury. And I took that job for a, a variety of reasons. First of all, um, Boston's not very far from me, so his pickup is, was only 18 miles away. <coughs> and off, there's not a lot of drivers out of Boston in, in the morning, so it's a good place for us to get work. Secondly, there was not much work around, so I really wasn't had you know, I couldn't choose too much. So just take it A work rather than nothing. Thirdly, it was a nice long distance, 147 loaded miles, <coughs> 147. And although it was a small van job, I put about 90p a mile on, and I got that job for £135, 135. And the last reason is, so it's quite a good amount of money, and just, that's the first job of the day. And the next, last reason was I thought, it's going to Newbury, I know vaguely in the Newbury area, it's not a great area to get a job from. It's um, not very far from Swindon, Reading, not a million miles away from Oxford. That sort of area of the country, to the south, but not by the coast. And I don't think it's good for getting work from that area. But I thought there is actually in Newbury itself a shipper that does a lot of work for hospitals. And so I wondered whether there might be an opportunity to get work um, from them when I got there. So that was my sort of test, really. Would that be the case? Or would it not be the case? So I took the job for those reasons. I um, left the house at 10 past 8. I arrived on site at 9 o'clock. Um, it was about a 40 minute journey, but there's a bit of traffic. Boston, uh, the job I had was the other side of Boston. You have to go through, the, through the, across the river, and it always gets very congested because it's only got sort of a single route across Boston that, at that point. So it always takes longer to get through Boston than uh, you might imagine for the size of the town. And I arrived on Saturday at 9 o'clock. Um, I'd rung the shipper, the, the, uh, the um, 
the eight, sorry, the, um, the, the time of arrival was 8.50 and I said that I'd be there at 9 and they were fine with that. So I arrived on the site, which is the hospital, and hospitals can be difficult to find places. I was going to find the stores. Um, it wasn't very well signposted. Um, I followed the delivery sign, not to the right road, and then it kind of, the signs seemed to stop for deliveries. Um, I really couldn't see anything else. So I found the estates office and, and signed in there. I, I, I didn't know actually, I'm glad I went there. I didn't know that actually you do have to go and sign in there with your reg anyway. And that's, I know, so I know that for next time. It's like a, a tablet you sign. Now I asked the guy there if where, where the stores was. He told me where to go. He said, "Go back out of here, turn left." I remember significantly saying, "Go around and turn left." And so I did that and turned left, and it was, a, it was just a car park, and it was obviously not the right place. So I came back, parked in a different place, walked up to the office, asked him, "I said I'm lost, I don't know where to go." And he walked down and said, "Oh, you go down this road here." which was right for a start, not left, and it was a one-way system, and that was the no-entry system. So he wasn't particularly useful. Um, and it was helpful because he walked down with me, but he, he, uh, so I just wanted him to tell me where it was, and I'd find my, find my way there. So he was not sure now. He knew where the building was, he didn't know how to get there. So he told me to walk with him. We walked down this road, which was sort of, we walked down the one-way system the wrong way. He pointed out where the goods in was, and I could see that the other side, like in a, in a quadrant shape, it went around in a quadrant shape, I could go, I could go around the other side. So I thanked him, went back up my van, went right, all, right, all the way around and got to the right place. So that's about 15 minutes. But I was surprised that the estates office guy didn't know how to get to stores from his, from his hut. But, you know, maybe he does a different job. So I got there and found the trolley of goods and I was asked by the shipper to check off the reference numbers for the goods with a document they put on the CX. Now I had 14 quite heavy boxes with labels on the sides. I had to lift up those boxes to see the labels. And the document that I was given, which I'm assuming was just passed on from the customer, wasn't something the shipper created, was quite fuzzy on my phone. It was I would say it was readable, but like a nine looked a bit like an eight, and you had to really look carefully. You know, and a three could have been an eight, because it wasn't a very clear picture. But and the other thing about this was, the reference numbers like, were like 14 digits long, and there was like letters and numbers in them. And the stuff I'm carrying is obviously from hospital, it's probably, it is obviously quite important stuff. You don't want to make a mistake. So I was given the task to double check I had the right reference numbers, but the tools I'd been given didn't allow me to do that job very easily. I couldn't see the reference numbers on the phone. I had my phone open up as big as I could, and I couldn't see them, it was too fuzzy. So I started to write them down a pad, but write down to four digits, and they're fuzzy. Even that in itself was hard. And I was just, it was, it was five minutes, because you've got 14 boxes, you've got to lift them all up, find out which one's got the right number and you know some of them had you know anyway it wasn't like you could just look at the last three numbers because they all had different starts some had letters some had numbers at starts it was it wasn't as easy as it might sound so I just thought I'm gonna be here for an hour doing this if I'm not careful and I can't just ignore it just put the 14 boxes I had 14 boxes and I was told to let 14 boxes so that bit was right so it was highly likely I had the right stuff but as a, as a shortcut, I took a photo of all the um, labels on the boxes and loaded up on my van. I then um, put, loaded on my CX and rang the shipper and said, I've got them loaded up, I've put the photos on the CX, can you just double check I've got the right numbers based on your reference numbers? And he did check, he said, get back to me. And the thing is, I think if you're on a computer in an office, it's slightly easy to look at a document on a big screen than on a little phone when you've got the sun shining in your eyes. So anyway, and also my answer isn't, isn't the greatest. I'm getting some new glasses in a couple of weeks' time. My glasses need changing. So, that
they did that, I, I started running away towards Newbury and they called me back five minutes later and it's all fine. So I'd managed to find a way to, to double check the items without being there for too long and, wait, and wasting everyone's time, including my own. As it was, although I arrived at nine on site, I didn't leave the site till half past nine, having done to, to all this. And when I left the site, it was a, it was a lovely day, and it was saying three and three quarters, sorry, three and a quarter hours to get to Newbury, which was longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it'd be more like two hours, just off the top of my head. So I checked the checked the route on the, um, on the Google Maps. It was a direct route, and there was no delays, so that was what it was. So just to summarise then. A small van, 147 loaded miles, 135 pounds. And I made my way to Newbury. And that trip was nice, easy. I stopped about halfway, had, had a loom break. Then got, and I, I estimated that my ETA at um, Newbury would be half past one. I added on about an hour after it got, or if it was an hour from, my, from, Google, from what Google Maps said, just to be on the safe side. And uh, by the time I arrived, it was offloaded. I was arrived about 20 past one, I was offloaded by half past one. So, it was half past one, I'd done one job. I'd found the job, driven to the pickup, loaded, driven to the drop off, offloaded. That was basically half a day's work. Um, so, for one, th one, three, five, half a day's work isn't necessarily enough. And I found myself in Newbury looking for jobs. Now, there was a lot of work around that area, um, not necessarily in Newbury itself, there wasn't there was two or three jobs in Newbury, um, but most of the jobs were from Oxford or Swindon or the Swindon area, and it was all small van work, and it was all going to the London area. Which is what... I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to go somewhere, sort of West Midlands, East Midlands, or you know, anywhere really, yeah, Northwest even. But I also wanted to get home because I was quite tired. I didn't want to tramp out. So I put some bids on and I had to just basically see what came up. And in the end, I got a job going from Oxford, which was 40 minutes away, 29 dead miles. And it was going, unfortunately, to Iver, which is near Slough. Um, it was, I got the call at 1.42, so I was only waiting for 12 minutes to get that job. <coughs> and I put a bid on, I wasn't really sure what to do about bids for this, because it was going to London, and I didn't, I didn't know how long it was going to take. So I put, a, I estimated if it was a two hour job, I'd be happy to get £60 in total, including sort of the, the everything. So 40 miles to Oxford, and it was about an hour to get to Iver, so I thought 10 minutes to load, 10 minutes to offload, that's probably about two hours. So I thought 60 pounds. I put the bid on, I got the goal quite quickly, and I thought if I underbid here, what's going to go on? So I was a bit apprehensive about this, it's a small van job. So I drove towards Oxford, and again it was a lovely day, lovely drive, uh, I wasn't, I've not been to Oxford on work, I don't think ever before, so I know Cambridge can be a bit of a nightmare, but, but Oxford I've never been to before. Uh, there are roadworks that look the centre, but actually it wasn't too bad. I found um, the right street pretty quickly. Um, it was quite busy, and then I realised there were lots of students moving out. And I, about five minutes off the sort of point I was getting to, I realised uh, it's Oxford, I'm probably and I, because I was delivering to a logistics company, I was thinking it's probably going to be... Right, sorry, also I had a named person and a, and a mobile number to call as a contact. So with the named person, it being Oxford and it going to the logistics company, I sort of put two two together and thought maybe this is a student house move. And I, my heart sank when I thought that. I thought, am I going to have to be carrying boxes, you know, downstairs of a, of a horse residence? and uh, carrying this, and I just felt, I, I can't really cope with that, um, and if it is that, I'm going to have to probably ask the students to do it themselves to my van, and I'm going to feel bad about that. So I was apprehensive, I called the student who was in town, he, so he, he was a student in the end, he um, cycled in from Oxford, I called him five minutes before, I got myself to the right place, he arrived about three minutes later, um, on his bike, 
um, and then he went into his halls, he came out and he came to me with a single wheeled suitcase and I was so grateful for having just that amount um, I was really pleased because it meant I wasn't going to have to do all the lifting and carrying that I thought I was going to have to do I can just come straight a little bit, I'm going across this road to go straight across that, that one and go straight across. Um, so it's given me what time is my ACM. Oh well, I'm going a slightly different way, I don't think it's too bad. Just checking my route. No, it's not too bad. Right, so um, where was I? Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. So I had a single, single bag. So I've made my way from Oxford towards Ivor and it was about 50 minutes drive um, and then about, as I, as I left, I had my 50 miles to go warning for diesel. So I had 46 loaded miles, 50 miles in the tank, I had a choice, I could either stop on the way and get fuel or deliver this load and then get fuel and deliver it. And I thought of it for a bit and I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm in there I don't know very well. Let's just get this loaded, I'm sorry, offloaded, and then I'll find fuel at the other end. So that's the start of my journey. Is that how much of Oh, I've got, I can't remember if I told you how much of it. I've got £60 for this, 6 0, the small man job. Yeah, I did take that time. So I. miles away and I uh, was due to get in to Ivor at around about um, four o'clock-ish, no, ten, ten, ten to four, sorry. So I'm just looking at my figures. So I um, I, I left Oxford at 2.45 and I was due to be at Ivor around about ten to and I arrived at Oxford at 2.35, just checking my fingers, yeah that's right, so I arrived at Oxford, arrived there and waited at 2.35, waited for about 5 minutes and was loaded up and off by 2.45. Sorry about that. Um, so, then I was out of petrol, and I was also quite tired at this point um, of the day. So, on the way, I thought I'm not going to get a job back. But a job came up from Amersham going to Bourne in Lincolnshire. And I put a bid on of about £70 or £80. Pounds. It, was, it would have been an ideal job, it just was a little bit too early for me. The job was picking up between 10 past 3 and 10 past 4 and I got a call from the shipper at 20 past 3 and I'd worked out that I was at that point half an hour away from my drop off. It was just a suitcase, so I'll drop it off, 5 minutes drop it off and then it was half an hour away roughly from Amersham from there. So I said to when he rang, just so you know, I would love to do the job, but I can't be there till 20 past four at the earliest. Is that any good for you? And he ummed an hour to get back to his customer and find out. So I was, I was going to be, I said I'd be there 10 minutes after his latest time. But I knew from his tone of voice that I suspected his customer was not going to allow him to do that. Actually, I think his words, said, I think he said his customer would have a go at him for doing that. So, actually, yeah, it wasn't just tone of voice, it's what he said as well. So it was unlikely that his customer was going to give that job to me. And he said, call me back. But I wasn't expecting to get a call back. And in the end, I didn't get a call back. And, and also, actually, to be fair, although it was a perfect job to get me home and a good price, 
I wouldn't have got there in time in the end because I had forgotten that I had to get fuel. So I put the phone down and then I realised, oh, actually, no, I'm probably not going to do this. If I get this, I'm going to be in real stress because I haven't got any fuel, am I? <clears throat> so, in the end, it's probably a good job I didn't get a job. Well, it was a good job I didn't get a job because my stress levels would be out the roof. So, I got myself to Ivor and I arrived at the logistics place. It was a wet, small, when I say small warehouse, it wasn't um, a, distribution, a, a big distribution centre. It was more like a, 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 it was a big place, it was a big warehouse, but you sort of like a family size, a family sized firm place, I would say. So the people there were busy working. There was three or four people in the warehouse that were, I could hear but I couldn't see. So I sat, stood there and called out and no one came to me. I was at the, was at the door of the warehouse, the open door, with this suitcase. And I'd walked through the yard and there was a couple of Ford drivers unloading vans. They were really busy. So I stood there for a few minutes hoping someone would come and see me. And then, because I'm not, I don't like walking into warehouses just unannounced. It seems some people can be really um, um, or intensely, intensely about that. So I stayed there for a bit. I, walked, I intentionally walked in and found someone and said, we've got a suitcase to deliver. And he said, go and see someone out there about it. So he wasn't any help. I went back outside, found, I got the, caught the eye of a forklift driver, who whizzed past me, stopped, and I said, I've got a sort of emergency suitcase to deliver, what can I do with it? And I pointed to it, and he said, oh, I'll find someone. So he went off, came back, oh, there's no one there. And he said, oh. and he said, ask this other guy, the other forklift driver. And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. So, I mean, they were friendly, but they just wanted me to help. But because they were really busy, so I don't blame them. Um, so I, 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 I waited off at the side of the yard for this other photographer to catch my eye, and he did catch my eye. And as I said, I've got this, this uh, suitcase. He said, "Yeah, tell them inside it's this word." And I don't know what the word was, but let's say it's storm shadow. Um, and so tell me it's a storm shadow. And so as I went in. And said that, I said to another of the guys that I was, I'd met before, uh, and I hadn't met before, oh, this is a storm shadow, do you know what that means? He said, yeah, leave it here with me. So, so it wasn't actually storm shadow, it was something else, but so it's equally as um, silly. So obviously there's some sort of company they work for that deals with luggage. But why the first guy didn't know that, I don't know. It went, I went to exactly the same place in the, in the warehouse, like a, um, a, a desk. So I waited up, anyway, the point is, I got it signed off, I wasted about 15 minutes doing that drop off. So if I had been in a rush, it wouldn't have, it would have been really, really stressful. And now I was off site and I had to get some diesel. So I had a look at my app. At the moment I've got um, a fuel price for key fuels, which are cheaper than UK fuels, only by a penny. A penny, penny, penny and a half. It's about 113.1 for key fuels for me, and it's about 114.9 for UK fuels. So I used my app to find the key fuels garage, so there's one five miles away. I don't like the key fuels app, I must say. And I don't know the, because in there, I just, I just rely on it. So I followed the app directions and it took me to a housing estate behind an SO, which was very frustrating. But back onto the main road, found another SO opposite that SO, and on my side of the road and went to that SO. You can probably guess what's going to happen. I usually check when I go to a new place that they accept my cards. But in the past, SOs have accepted one of my cards. I can't remember which one. So, I just filled up and took both cards in on the off chance they wouldn't take key fuels. I showed them my key fuels card. No, don't take that. I showed them my UK fuels card. Don't take that. So I had to pay my debit card, my company debit card very frustrating because the cost of the fuel was 151.7 and so that's 
going to really bugger up my average fuel price for this week. But there's nothing else I can do at this point. I've already put the fuel in. Um, yeah, so I don't like the key fuels app. It's, it's, out, it's, it's outdated technology. It's not accurate. And
So I'm actually not going to avoid Newbury. I'm going to avoid Newbury, Oxford, Swindon area as my first job of the day. What I am going to do is remember that there's always jobs from there to London. Yeah, you know, I can get a job from there to London at any time of the day, any time of the week, I'm sure. So if I've got a job that's perhaps in the northwest or Birmingham or not, you know, anywhere else, heading to Newbury as my second job of the day, then that's a plan to get home. Um, it's still going to be in the dead morning from London, but it is a way in which I can get myself, if it's really quiet, get myself to the New Oxford, Newbury, Swindon area as my second job, then to London and then dead morning at home. So that is something I will bear in mind. I'm not going to be doing south of the country, anything in the south of the country, as my first job of the day. Again, it's just not worth it unless it's paying really well and I think that's unlikely. Right, well I hope that you are, um, I hope you're well, I hope you are being successful in however way you choose to define that word for yourself. It's been a bit more interesting in terms of the video today, lots of different country, different types of roads. That car's pulling over. So before I go, thank you for watching my video, and I shall see you later today, probably. Farewell, friends.